Hi everyone, welcome to a new round of the Pro Chess League. This is going to be the third round in just a week's time. So uh, it's been a very busy schedule. I have forgotten to turn off the sound. Uh, but that is quickly fixed. And we're ready for a new day. Uh, today we will be having the um, Norway Gnomes uh, against the riga magicians riga magicians i'm gonna actually find the um find the um, the standings I'm, I'm gonna do the standings i think being very advanced today let's do this no let's not do that let's do like this and then i go here here and here because then we can see the standings currently in the pro chess league in the eastern division and it's close it's very very close uh yamato yamato fanboy asks will magnus be playing this round no magnus is not playing he's taking a week off uh, but we still have a very strong team, uh, including the Frenchman uh, on the first board, to which Troll Chess says Allez, Allez, which is French for Go, Go, Go. Uh, yeah, Magnus is not playing. But it's a very important match because it's so close. We're half a point out from the top spot, but at the same time, we're also just half a point ahead of the uh, missing out on the big knockout stage so um i'm looking forward to it all teams are around 2500 ratings says tabber jack yeah no that is true uh, and thank you to snobble joel for for subscribing every team is around 2500 but some st teams are still stronger than others. Um, actually, as a matter of fact, every time Magnus has not played for the team, the team has lost. So I, I guess there's a, a bad history we really need to fix uh, for today. Um, so our players today is... How am I going to do that? I'm, I'm just going to use the same window, right? Our players today is, uh, yeah, because now I messed up. But our players today will be Fresine on board number one, the uh, French Grandmaster, second of Magnus Carlsen, famously known for his <laughs> being featured in the Two Week Too Slow uh, video. Uh, but he's only two weeks too slow when playing Magnus, or so we are hoping. We have Johan Salomon, the Twitter uh, Puzzle King, on second board. And he also played one of the earlier rounds and did really, really well. Uh, it's a season debut for Johan Sebastian Christiansen, the Norwegian speed phenomenon. He uh, once, uh, not this year, but the year after that, he managed to win eight games in a row in the FIDE World Champ Blitz World Championship. Uh, so he's good with Blitz, but is he good with Rapid? That is the big question, and he gets another chance to prove himself uh, today. Finally... Uh, we have Tui Björn Hingdal Hansen, who has been doing a magnificent job. Magnificent job uh, the last two times he played. Uh, and uh, as such, I think he is the strongest fourth board in the Eastern Division. And I really think that he could pick up quite a few points today. No Elham this week. That is correct. Elham is getting a rest. He has been playing every single round. Uh, and with Magnus not playing, I chose to do some other 
give some other people a chance and increase the average rating. Very balanced team, says Mar598. Yes, that is true. It's a very balanced team. And it, to some extent, it can go really well or really poorly. So I think the Minnesota Blizzards, they have like they have like four guys between 2500 and uh, and 2450 and, and they had you know just a massive success the first couple of weeks uh, so it can work out really well but it can also work out quite poorly uh, for instance the Oslo trolls our compatriots uh, are struggling with uh, their team of uh, guys between 26 and 2400. Uh, so I, I think when you have an evenly matched team, you are so, so dependent on the third and fourth board really delivering, uh, really uh, getting those points, exploiting that they are higher rated uh, than their opposite uh, player. Um, Carlos Silva asks, could you make the Magnus video available to all? Uh, I'm not going to do that because <clears throat> I don't want to disrupt the my policy of that my video on demand is going to be um, for subscribers only uh, and I'm not going to do an exception for the Magnus video. CC Catch is in the chat with the gnome emotes. The gnomes are going to show what they can today um i guess i can do another screen capture to do the magicians no i can just fix the whole thing uh so our opponents today is from latvia and it's the riga magicians uh so it's uh fresine solomon christiansen and hansen for the gnomes and then we have on the uh, Latvian team, we have Kovalenko, who is such a beast. He's going to be very, very difficult to even get points off of. Uh, we have on the second board, Artur Nikans. Uh, I think we will have good chances against Nikans. And then we have Nikita Meskovs, um, who I don't really know very much about. Uh, but he's rated very similar to our uh, bottom three guys uh, so it's going to be very crucial that we're able to pick off points from Meskovs um, yeah, why are there GMs? it's because of the setting let's um, I can do the round four when is um, when the first board plays the opposite first board maybe it makes it it makes it looks look better for sure um, and for the final board, they have a female international master, woman international master, uh, Anna Katane. Uh, and that actually means that they have an average above 2,500 because um, the, you can use a female player and she would, will be counted as if she's rated 100 points or less. Uh, this is being done by the league in order to uh, incentivize uh, having uh, female players on the team. Uh, so the Riga Magicians actually have a rating average above 2500 and we have a rating average almost precisely at uh, 2500. So that is, um, I mean, these are two very strong teams, both at the, the very edge uh, of the um, of what's allowed uh, ranking by wise uh, let's remove this one Nikita is not a girl. Nikita Meskovs is not a girl. Why is a grandmaster playing fourth board? 
asks late volley and that i can answer and that is basically because we have a very very strong team uh and uh, as such we are able to have a grandmaster to to be king dal hansen on the fourth board and that is i i think that's basically our strategy for today is that Torbjörn uh is going to be a very very strong fourth board and it's going to pick up a lot of points for the team even though he is the fourth board so uh that is um uh th that is i i think basically strategy good morning chess bay I, I say good morning because it's true, but it shouldn't be true because it's it's almost 5 p.m. here. Yeah, no, Magnus is not coming. Magnus is not coming. That was a one-time thing. I think if everybody is expecting Magnus to be here for my streams, you're going to get very disappointed. Too weak, too slow, says 10 out of 10 strategy. But I'm not sure you will agree with that because, um, I, well, I'm not sure you're going to keep saying that uh, because <laughs> Fresi Ney just told me that he has a minus nine score against Kovalenko. So it, it appears that Fresi Ney might be too weak, too slow against both Carlson and Kovalenko. But it's... Early days yet, early days yet. We'll see what happens as the match um, starts and, and develops and lives a life of its own. Uh, I also have the scoreboard. So now it says 0-0, zero, zero, nil, nil. Uh, And I'm going to keep the gnome score to the left. Uh, so that the gnome score is the first thing you read and then the opponent's. I think that's going to be the most, the easiest one to understand. Dark squared bishop is just giving us a 9 out of 10 for strategy. Oh, that's interesting. Magnus is not playing today. Uh, Anand is playing today. Uh, so that's the big news uh, from... Um, from the getting chess world champions to play, Anand will be playing the internet tournament. And there was a question of, I was doing my fantasy team last night. Probably a lot of you were, were following that. Uh, and I really wasn't sure whether to pick Anand or not, seeing as how he doesn't have a lot of uh, experience playing online. Uh, but in the end, I decided uh, that yes, I'm going to go with Anand. So I will be cheering him on against the Oslo Trolls. Now the Oslo Trolls is, is having trouble. Uh, I, we cannot lie about that. The Oslo Trolls are currently in the relegation zone. Uh, so they have a job to do and they could really use a win against Mumbai. Uh, Marcelin has a question. Why does the gnome's beard grow from the ears? You know what? I have never noticed that before. I have never noticed that before. Yeah, no, it's, it's strange. Norwegians, you know, we have hair everywhere. Iago Branco says, Anand is a beast in rapid. He will be fine. Yes. Uh, well, basically somebody in the chat reminded me that Anand is the current rapid world champion. Uh, and that was enough to convince me to put Anand on my fantasy team. Dr. Spot asks, have you never seen an old guy whose hair comes out of his ears and into the beard? 
Yeah, no, I, I, I think I have. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Chess Bay, for um, for gifting subs to TG Sticks. You die is in the chat. We have HMW Life. We have all of the regular guys following the gnomes. We're gonna start in ten minutes. Ten more minutes till the gnomes start. Any questions about what we are, I don't know, expecting life in general? How many carrots I ate today? I can report that from the team chat, everyone is in very good spirits. Uh, it's a lot of French. Uh, vocabulary being used in the team chat. We're very excited to have Laura on the team. Uh, and uh, apparently, I didn't know this, uh, but uh, Johann Sebastian seems to be quite, quite unexpectedly good at French. Uh, let's put it like that. Care to predict the score of the Gnomes match? asks JPK. Um, well, I predict that we will win, uh, but I predict it's going to be very, very close. Um, so I'm going to say eight and a half, seven and a half for the gnomes. Very close, but the gnomes is going to go get it. Uh, Udai asks, do you keep a proper sleep schedule? No. How many carrots did you eat today? asks Chess. Uh, I ate one carrot so far. One carrot so far. But might be more after stream. Um, HMW Life asks, when will you play Civ 5? Uh, actually, did you miss yesterday's stream? Yesterday I said I will be doing Civ 5. I will do a full day of Civ 5, doing a, a proper uh, playthrough. Thank you to Hawkun for subscribing. Hawkun was one of my opponents yesterday in the bullet, I believe. So I, I will I will play Civ Five uh, this month, and I will set the date pretty soon. Why isn't Magnus playing? Um, he's a pretty busy guy. And on Friday, he starts his match with Hikaru Nakamura. Uh, so, uh, being the world champion, your days are pretty filled. And I'm just very happy he's available to play so often uh, that he is. He is a crucial part for the um, part of the team. Uh, and, I mean, he's been brilliant. Uh, every time Magnus didn't play, we lost. Uh, so, I'm hoping to turn that around. Uh, today um, which is the strongest team in the tournament asks late volley um, I would say the pandas the pandas are just amazing uh, it's the first ever Chinese team in the league and they are just so so strong also Stockholm is is pretty good Stockholm is pretty good they made it to the um, semi-final last year uh, where we managed to beat them. Uh, but once again, they're tearing everyone apart in the European division. Uh, Dark Squared Bishop asks, do you know French? Un petit peu. peu. Uh, I know a little bit. I had French for three years and basically I, I was not very good at it. But I, I know some phrases. I can have a monologue, but not a dialogue. Laufen has joined uh, us with his Earl Tea with Honey. Let's do some teacups for Laufen. Uh, I'm, I'm doing actually Lady Grey. Lady Grey is my tea of choice. Tubberjack asks, why not Civ 6? 
It's simply because I don't have enough game time. I don't feel comfortable playing it because I have never completed a full, full Civ Six, and I it, it, there's so much I don't understand. So I'm I'm much more comfortable with Civ Five. Although Civ Six is a great game, I I think some of the I hated it the first couple of hours I tried, uh, but then I realized this is big improvements they have made. Punjab has the best carrots, says Yudai. Um, what are the rules on the lowest rated player on the team? Um, well, essentially the rules is that your average cannot be above 2,500. So either you stack the team with massively good players and then have one really low rated player uh, or you go um, or you go with the um, the evenly team the even team very much such as the gnomes are fielding uh, today chess asks does it bug you that Norway has the lamest perks in Civ 5. Uh, I don't know. Is there even Norway in Civ 5? I don't think there is. There's Danes, no? Why aren't you playing, asks Ireland. Yeah, no, I'm doing the um, commentary. Very important job. Who do you think will win the 960 match? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's pretty e evenly matched. It's going to be interesting how Magnus uh, hand handles it. Because he's been really poor in the chess.com matches. His 960 has been terrible in the Blitz matches. But I think he'll... Uh, I think he'll manage. Take it more seriously. Uh, Fahan Ahmed is asking, will you be playing the Crazy House tournament? Um, I don't think my schedule allows, actually. I don't think the schedule allows. The most common strategy is to find the most underrated board for you possibly can. Okay, I think I have caught up with most of the uh, chat questions. I'm going to go to my guys, uh, check that everyone is on the line so that there isn't a, a forfeit in the first. First problem, I don't remember the username of Torbjörn. <laughs> Vincent Masaku. Man. Okay, let's do the other ones. We have Christiansen is on the line. We have Johan Salomon on the line. We have Fresine on the line. And for the life of me, I cannot remember Torbjörn's username. It's some guy in Dexter. That's the only thing I know. Some guy in Dexter. Some guy in Dexter. Vincent something. Vincent. Vincent. Vincent Masuka. Vincent Masuka. Very good. Okay, my guys are ready. We're starting in two minutes. It's going to be the Norway Gnomes against the Riga Magicians. Riga, the birthplace of uh, Mihail Tal, the world champion. Um, 
the world champion um, who was known as the magician. Kevin asks, if you had to let either Yasser or Eric Hansen sleep at your house for a week, who would you choose? How is that even a question? I mean, are you kidding me? That's not even a question. I mean, I, w I would go with Yasser, of course. Everybody loves Yasser. And thank you to the Spartan Donut for subscribing. Vincent Mazuka. And we're getting good lucks from Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, the fourth, who is also the, which is also the username of the Pittsburgh Pawn Grabber Manager. Thank you from our American friends. I hope we will play each other in the Pro Chess League final. But that's uh, going pretty far ahead. Uh, we will concentrate on uh, this week's uh, games. First, uh, we have in the first round, we have Torbjörn Hansen against Kovalenko. Uh, that's going to be an interesting one. I, I think a, a very crucial one will be Solomon against Meskovs. Solomon, our second board, is actually lower rated than their third board, Meskovs. So we really need to set the standard and get a good result there. Uh, in order to get off uh, on a good start. And we are off. Uh, this is uh, Fresine with the black pieces against Katane. Uh, I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to go to this game with Johan the black pieces it's going to be a very crucial game uh, in order to uh, get points out of this match we could really need to um, get essentially stop Meskovs uh, I had a comment to Anna Rudolph she was asking do, do you have something general I can say from the Norway gnomes manager uh, and I said matches are won on the third board and I was kind of kidding, but kind of not. I think the third board is absol absolutely crucial uh, to do well uh, in um, in the the this a six. Are you kidding me? A six. So it's uh, this is interesting. This is an attempt at, at a um, I, I guess a queen's Indian on steroids. Going if g three, he's gonna go b five. And that's a very aggressive Queen's Indian. And if Knight C3, probably he was intending D5. And now Bishop G5 is very interesting. Because he's essentially trying to trick his opponent. Giving himself the option of not going Knight C3. Okay, so he chose Knight C3 anyhow. And this is a really weird line which has become popular the last couple of... Um, the last couple of years. I th really think that he had the option instead of here, instead of taking on d5, maybe he could have gone e3. Maybe that would have been very clever. But anyway, he didn't. Uh, Yuhan got the opening he was looking for. Uh, and this bishop e6 move, uh, which I mean, I, I think the whole line is pretty strange, but black has been doing pretty well already uh, Kim Hansen asks how do they control that there's no computers involved I think basically they do an analysis of how well you played and then they see if if that is normal for humans I mean humans cannot play chess perfectly and if you manage to play your games perfect, perfectly, there's going to be big red um, warning flags uh, going on. Uh, so, I mean, they, they have ways of telling whether you are cheating or not. And also there's punishments for even for the team. 
so at the moment, I, I think the league is pretty, pretty fair. We have Johann Sebastian Christiansen with the white pieces going true to his personality. He has pushed his pawns very aggressively in the center. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how this game turns out. And uh, Chess in the chat. Chess is from the official chess.com um, uh, people. Um, and um, he's basically saying it's a little more complicated but, than that. But it's the gist of it. So that is computer detection is um, is in place. Magic Carpet Ride says, I thought Hammer was the second strongest in the team. And that is just not correct. Number one, we have Fressy Ney. We'll, we'll take a look at him with the black pieces here. Uh, he didn't have a very good weekend the last time round. Uh, a week, I suppose. Um, but he's going to try to strike back. And he's higher rated than me. And also, we made a very good signing uh, not too long ago. We signed with Nils Grandelius, the second strongest Scandinavian. Um, and that's going to be a massive improvement to the team as well. Wow, action going on between Kovalenko and Rindal Hansen. Kovalenko with the black pieces has already sacrificed a pawn and he's playing so, so quickly. Wow, Kovalenko only having used one minute of his time already. That is very, very strange really it's strange because the position is so complicated and spending that little time might not work very well i i dislike tourbillon c4 move I, I thought here maybe he could go with the rook to to put some pressure on the queen so after c4 f4 bishop back g5 wow kovalenko is really going for it and the thing about playing c4 is that now your rook is completely out of play. It's not really contributing at all. So Turbion is going to have to reorganize this rook. Thank you to Exotic Orn for subscribing. Okay, Turbion is letting Kovalenko play e4 with the tempo and then pushing his bishop back to b1. That's interesting play interesting play but these pawns are looking menacing and Kovalenko is continuing with the same speed I mean had I been playing Kovalenko now I would be so so nervous just getting crushed by this guy blitzing out his moves um I don't know I mean Kovalenko has gotten something I think he's comfortable with it's a very complicated position with unclear consequences and that's kind of his bread and butter. That, that's what Kovalenko does. Uh, so I think he can be reasonably happy with the opening. And also it seems to me that if he goes queen c5 now, he might even get the pawn back. Yeah, no, he doesn't want that. I mean, he's just going with the pawns. Wow. Such a game and such a speed from Kovalenko. Such a game. We're, we will definitely go back to this one because this is some stunning stuff uh, from the Latvian number one player. Okay, we have Johann Sebastian with the white pieces with the center. So the big question now is whether he can keep this center. I would go C3 in order to just cover everything, have the pawns cover each other uh, and then see what happens. But the thing is, there's squares on d5 and f5 for the black knights. And it seems to me that even though the bishop on g7 is not doing very well, um, I think this is an interesting position for black. I think this might be an interesting position for black. Um, so yeah, 
we'll come back to this one but for the moment um both of the latvian black games uh, is looking pretty decent and that is not good news for the gnomes and jungle randall agrees it will be tough to win this one he says and 92 tommy uh, asks uh, doesn't tournament with rating caps lead to players tanking other tournaments to get underrated um i i, I suppose sandbagging uh, which is the the method you're referring to uh, could be a problem um, but the thing is that who wants to sandbag their normal rating um, just for the Pro Chess League? I mean, maybe they have to be careful of it as the league becomes more popular. But at the moment, I don't think it's a problem. Indolent Lad asks, are there any specific goals that, that should be achieved in the middle game? Um, like in the opening, when you develop all your pieces and get your king to safety. No, I think every middle game is different. And um, I, I can say what makes the differences. Uh, and it is the pawn structure. The pawn structure determines which plans you want to achieve or deploy. So the pawn structure is the most crucial part about the middle game. Uh, in my mind, uh, and you should be accustomed to uh, different pawn structures and be know the different plans available in those pawn structures. We're going to take a look at Fresine on the Norwegian board one against the Riga board uh, four, Anne Katane. And Katane is really attacking some aggressive stuff from the magician's female player um, i'm guessing she's planning to sacrifice something but i'm not sure how let's say if fresine takes on e4 the knight takes back and then bishop takes f5 um can she do something very dangerous on the next move or is that just gonna try to get some exchanges winning a pawn in the process i don't know but laura is thinking so um probably it's not that clear cut take this one maybe you can go queen g3 have it point down toward the black king uh, and say that with my pawn on f5 I'm opening up lines, um, removing pawns in front of the king, maybe trying to get some attack going there. Hi, Mardua. Okay, so Fresinate chose not to take on e4. I think that's pretty radical. Going bishop d6, pointing towards g3. I don't know, maybe he's actually concerned about the queen getting to that square. I don't know. maybe it's brilliant but to me it looks very dangerous if now katana takes on d5 and then bishop takes so if takes on d5 if bishop takes then she's going to sacrifice her rook on the bishop and this is what she played and this is what she's intending she's intending to sacrifice an exchange and that attack with the queen with the bishop pointing toward the black king it looks really dangerous and, and i'm pretty happy that fresine avoided that thank you to segi men for subscribing not to be confused with the norwegian candy simon
Mal asks, are you talking to me? Pro chess with a strong O. I don't know, but I've never spoken British English in my life. So actually, maybe I do sometimes. I just I'm not aware of it. Fun fact, the Norwegian school system preaches uh, British English, but because of Hollywood and everybody watching Hollywood TV shows, uh, most of the Norwegian kids, I think, are, are speaking American accents. <laughs> Segiman in the chat saying that he was trying to spell out Simon, the Norwegian candy, and <laughs> messed up the spelling. Wow, that is, that is just different level. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say about that. You tried to spell Simon, but you did. Fun fact, my first soccer team was the Ulan Simon. So our nickname, our nickname when we were seven years old uh, was the Simons. Uh, let's go to another game. I, I think Fress is under some pressure, but he's spending less time than his opponent. We have Johan Salman. Uh, and this, I already said before the game started that this is going to be a very crucial one. And I kind of like his position. I think uh, there's a weakening of the pawn structure, which looks fine because the pawn has taken toward the center. But actually having these doubled pawns make it very difficult for white to go e4 in the future. Because e4 is going um, to weaken the g4 square. Uh, if you if you take back on e4 with a pawn so why it is going to concentrate on doing the minority attack going with the pawn to b5 but Johan hmm do I like that move yeah I kind of do this I really like this move because now he gets the option of going to f5 and attacking on ah oh, but e4 e4 is such a good move e4 is a very good move you have to take that pawn and then maybe there's some tactics with knight takes knight takes queen f5 rook c5 suddenly all the black pieces are coming to life so knight e8 would have been very good if not for e4 but seeing as how black did have white did have e4 i mean if if he had gone something like Rook e8 air, he would have been very safe with the black pieces. So after e4, he doesn't dare taking on e4. Uh, Johan goes knight d6 instead. Knight d6 instead. This is interesting because e5, I thought you shouldn't go knight d6 because of e5, but then he gets knight f5 and the attack against the pawn on g3, and that pawn is quite difficult to defend quite difficult to defend so maybe maybe Yuhan has things under control it's an interesting strategic battle going on um let's go back to fresine something has happened when he played knight g4, threatening bishop takes h2, uh, Katana just ignored it. She played knight e4, bishop takes king to the other side, then bishop takes f5. Now there's an exchange sacrifice. Fresine takes back. Fresine with the exchange up. And I think he has better attacking chances than his opponent. Wow, really? No, maybe not. Knight g5 was interesting. Knight g5 was interesting. Instead, queen h3. Hmm. The big question is whether or not white is able to remove the pawn on f5. So I think the biggest threat is knight to g5, and then the bishop can take the pawn next. This is very dangerous, very dangerous stuff. Ah, but knight g5 is not a threat. Because if knight g5, then knight f2. So maybe Fres can go rook, rook e8. Maybe he can go rook e8. 
and if I'm moving like bishop g5, he can just take with the rook on e4 how is material? No. Ah, rook e8, if bishop g5, maybe he can take on g5 and then do the fork. Uh, no, that's also gonna lose a piece. Mm, it's very tricky stuff. The good thing is that Katana has only three minutes left against Fresh's nine. So if there is a defense here, I, I think he's gonna find it. But this position has become very tricky already. Very tricky position. Queen e7 is played. Queen e7. So the idea is on knight g5 still not possible knight g5 still not possible um no not that move how about how about something slow like queen h5 i think queen h3 was a mistake queen h3 was a mistake if she had played something like queen f3 just going after the pawn on f5 i think that would have been very difficult to defend against ah but then you have queen h4 so queen h3 is trying to prevent queen h4 but now you're kind of stuck because you cannot move your knight without allowing the fork with knight to f2 mm, i don't know bishop d2 that is such a cool move just saying uh, what's going on i don't know let's just make another move and see what happens and now she's threatening rook f1. Rook f1 coming up, going after that pawn on f5. And these black pieces on the king side are looking tricky. They are looking very tricky. I, I would think that Fres wants to get the bishop back into safety. So I'm expecting something like bishop e5. Um, rook f1 takes on e4, takes on g4 king in the corner and then it's very difficult to judge these bishops are doing a good job shooting diagonals toward the black king mm, it's very very tricky a uh, queen takes e4 White dancing suggests queen takes e4. Queen takes e4, takes back, check, takes, takes. And in the end there, bishop takes f5. I think the knight will be trapped. I think queen takes e4 is not going to work. I think you will lose a piece in the end. And you're going to end up with rook against two bishops. And that's just hopeless. In this position, the bishops are such beasts. I don't think that's going to work. Queen d6, ask Martua. Well, if you're going to go queen d6, you might as well do it the previous move. And, and I think queen d6, you're just going to take the queen. The problem is that at once you do the, um, the fork on f2, you also give up the defense of the bishop on h2. And that is why I'm suggesting bishop e5. Because you want to save that bishop so that it doesn't get lost after doing the knight f2 fork. Uh, idea king h8 king h8 that's a good uh, preparation move he's preparing to take on e4 without allowing queen takes g4 check i like that move i think that's a good move from first in a good move from first in a i think Rook f1 is the normal way to continue. Then I will just take the knight. And when she takes on g4, I'm going to go f5. Trying to exchange off some pieces. But it's still unclear. Even in that position, black, white has compensation for the exchange. But I, I think of the alternatives, uh, Fres made the right choice. Take on e4 and then f5. That's going to be my recommendation. He takes. Takes. And now there's all sorts of threats. He, he goes f5. He goes f5. So he's giving up this f5 pawn. Uh, just to be able uh, to get some exchanges. 
get, get rid of the white rook, open the f file for his own rook, uh, and maybe also chasing the white queen away from the h4 square. Maybe he can go there um, later. Takes, probably take back and go the other rook to f8, I think. Take, takes, and the other rook to f8. That's going to be my guess. I think pressing A is going to be an exchange up um, for a pawn. And then there will be some ending in which he has good chances to win, especially seeing as how his opponent only has 1 minute 30 left. Okay, we're going to check in on the other games. Very important. Our board 3 just blundered a piece. Our board 2, I mean. Just blundered a piece. Rook takes e4 and Johan resigns. Johan resigns. A terrible start for the gnomes. Johan resigns. That is our board 2 against their board 3. And Johan made a big blunder. But he was already in trouble. He was already a pawn down. So he white managed to get this position. In which all his pieces are doing a better job than the black pieces. Johan goes b6, sacrifices the pawn. But it doesn't really relieve the pressure. Because the knight just comes back into action to c6. And after queen f6, rook takes e4 is a very nice tactic. Removing the defender of the knight. And if you exchange p uh, queens, then the rook manages to escape uh, the claws of the white pawn. So 1-0 for the, for the Riga magicians. Let's go see Torbjörn. Torbjörn is massively low on time and he has also lost a piece. Torbjörn has lost a piece. He's playing with five pawns against three and he's way down on time. They, this is not going well. Torbjörn is going to lose this game with the piece down. Fresine has gotten checkmated. Lohan has gotten checkmate. How did that happen? Rook f8, queen takes e4, bishop back to d6, king king g1, avoiding the checkmate with rook to f1. Fresine is an exchange up. He could have exchanged queens, given a check. This was probably a winning position, but he played queen f6. After which queen takes h7 is checkmate. Wow. That is a huge blunder from Fresine. And the gnomes are down 2 to nil. What to do, what to do. Okay, so our last hope in the first round is Johann Sebastian Christiansen. And what is going on here? This is a properly weird pawn structure. Properly weird pawn structure. Uh, but also white has an isolated double pawn on the other side of the board. It's very difficult to say who this favors. I would maybe go f5. I would maybe go f5 trying to shut down uh, the the black bishop. But um, Johan, Johan Sebastian has gone rook d5. Rook d5, maybe intending doubling, no, maybe intending rook b5. I think that's his idea. Fresine is a double agent, says Yunum. And there's speculation of it being a mouse slip. I don't think it was a mouse slip. I think he just forgot about his opponent's threat. And I'm not going to ask him in team chat, are you crazy? After the guy loses a winning position, then, then you shut up. You don't, you don't start bugging him. 
Um, so yeah, uh, Johann Sebastian is our best hope of getting some points in this first round. But to be honest with you, it's not looking good. It's looking like the gnomes are going to lose the first round 4-0. Ah, oh, but maybe c5. There's tactics. There's tactics and Johann Sebastian is a beast when it comes to tactics. c5, rook takes c5, knight c8, check. Hmm, no, it doesn't work. So he doubles his rooks and now he's threatening knight c8, check. But on the other hand, look at the black pawns. This is the weirdest pawn structure ever. And look at that. He gives it up. Takes. And now take on g3. Check. King up. Take on h2. Look at these pawns. There are there are five black pawns on the three, on the three ranks uh, on the king's side. That is, that is just weird. That is just weird. Maybe knight, bishop f4 now for Nikons. Bishop f4 might be a good move. Okay, he chooses to take on h2. Then rook takes f7 is probably the idea. Hitting the pawn on h7, hitting the pawn on f6. Yes, that's what he's doing. Let's take a little look at Torbjorn. Torbjorn still a piece down. Queening for no good reason at all. Gets a check. The black king is safe. There's a passed pawn. And I don't see how Torbjorn is going to stop that passed pawn. I do not see how he's going to stop that one. And so I think Torbjorn is just lost. I don't think there's anything to do about this guy and that leaves Johann Sebastian can he save the day it's a very complicated position white is an exchange up but black has a pawn on h2 I'm gonna say there's no chance white can win this and then I hope to be proven wrong bishop e3 bishop g1 is a sensible way of playing for black. Rook c4. Ooh, a big idea. If rook takes h7, he goes rook h4. And then if rook h1, bishop c1 check. It's a nasty discovered attack. Ooh, that's very clever from Nikons. He actually manages to keep his pawn on h7. It looked like it was doomed. But he's going to manage to protect it. And now rook h4. What are you planning? Um, Maybe rook f2. Johann Sebastian is a low on time as well. This is not looking good. Yeah. Iago Branco says that his fantasy is going down with these results. Yeah. It's not good. Although I think you really should have Kovalenko on your team. I mean, he's such a beast. I'm not allowed to have him on my team because we are playing the Latvians. But I, I think everyone else really should have Kovalenko on their team. Uh, Rook h3 attacks the pawn on c3. And we have a result. Torbjörn has resigned. The pawn was unstoppable on a2. So I'm going to update the results. <sighs> With a heavy heart. O3. O3. This is not, not good. Johann Sebastian is down to four seconds on the clock. Four seconds on the clock. And this pawn is looking unstoppable. You need to get the rook back into defense. No, he cannot. There's no way of getting the rook to the G file. And as such, there's no way to stop black from going G2. Now H1. H1. 
is probably good. H1, check, bishop in between. He goes bishop in between first, rook down. How about now doing a new queen? No, g2. Going for the humiliation, but I think that may have been a mistake. That may have been a mistake. How many checks? How many check? No more checks. No more checks for Christiansen. And with two seconds left on the clock, he's gonna get checkmated either by the black queen or by the fact that black can go get another queen whenever he wants. And uh, Nikons gave up his queen on one of the white rooks and he's gonna get a new queen on h1. And it's an 0-4 start for the Norway gnomes. Wow. Wow. I was saying before the stream that the team has lost every match in which Magnus has not played. And I really thought it was going to be different this time around. That is... That is not good. The chat is hashtag sad. This is not, not good. Shocker Locker says, I have Torbjorn on my team. Yeah, I do as well. And I think Torbjorn is going to strike back from this one. The game against Kovalenko was always going to be really difficult. But there were other games uh, where we could have gotten more. And I'm being... Yeah, the trolls are out and about. I'm getting messages on Facebook about how I feel about Mr. Fresines going in for a made in one. Still three games left, says Ordinary Twitch name. Yes, that is correct. We will ignore the French MVL and his attempt to making me hurt in in Facebook chat. Yeah. I still think the gnomes will win 9 to 7 says Tubber Jack. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's not looking very good at the moment, is it? New games in 4 minutes. And the team chat is not as merry as it was before the round started. Let me tell you that. Well, technically the Jugard MVL is not cyber mobbing me. He's attacking my team as a whole and Fress in particular. Uh, so, um, yeah. It's pretty much game over, sorry, says TGE Sticks. Yeah. No pressure now, says too weak to slow. And I'm informing the team chat that we lost every single game. So some some guys were still blif blissfully ignorant of how this first round turned out. And Johann Sebastian is rubbing it in, asking who lost to the bottom board. 
Oh man, that is that is so so sick. So so sick. And we have MVL in the chat. No. We do have MVL in the chat. And he's having a lot of fun with the gnomes. I'm glad you're enjoying the show, Maxim. We do try to entertain you week in, week out. That's why we get fresh to play for our team. To, to make sure you are properly entertained. Okay, there's a new game in a minute. So, the, at once the games start, we can stop thinking about how this first round completely went awry. And we can start focusing on just making chess moves. Wake up, says Young Oblin. No, Young Goblin, just with a G too little. Uh, okay, we have Fresine against Meskovs. I already made the argument that board 3 is going to be absolutely crucial. And Meskovs is their board 3. Uh, so let's take a look at that. We need a big comeback from Fresine. He, uh, Fres informed me uh, before the start that he has a terrible score against Kovalenko. And I told him, well, it's fine, just make a draw. I think that's officially off the table. Uh, we're going to need wins from all our players, uh, including the French guy. And MVL, no French in the chat. That is a very recent hammer rule. I just invented it. But no French in the chat. Uh, yeah, no, that was a poor, poor start to our, um, match. Let's see, Nikons. Um, I really think we have a chance at beating this guy. I had the most legendary game against Nikons uh, last year in which I was playing a good game, outplaying him, then it became complicated. And then we had this really weird situation in which he could um, he could queen his pawn. Uh, no, he could have uh, underpromoted his pawn to a knight and given checkmate. But he has he had auto queen on, and he couldn't figure out how to switch off auto queen. So instead, he decided. That, okay, I'll get a queen instead, even though getting a knight is checkmate in one move. Uh, and he got a queen instead. And then I had checkmate. I had checkmate in four moves. And I didn't see it. Uh, and then he ended up winning the game after all. I mean, it was just the most freakish game ever. Uh, but I, I think we should get him back for that. We should get some payback. Um, and I'm hoping Torbjorn can be the one to supply. But the fact that he's currently thinking about this queen attacking g7, I don't think that's a very good sign. I don't think... Bishop back to f8, that's interesting. Then knight c6, wanting to attack the e5 pawn. Yeah, okay. It's possible. And Marius has joined the show late, only to discover that we're down four to nil. That is, that is a bummer. How do you cope with that? Let's look at Fresine. He has managed to double his opponent's pawns on the F file. That could be very good. That could be very good. And now he's trying to open the F file so that he can use his rook to attack. So he's trying to get his opponent into taking this bishop, thereby opening the f-file and doing some nasty stuff down there. 
but rook g8 is attacking the pawn on g2 and how do you cope with that probably Laurent is going to play g3 but then bishop g4 and the light squares on the king side is weakened so still a very tricky game here i think probably he should gambit this pawn maybe he should gambit the pawn maybe he should go like d4 trying to open up no he goes g3 he goes g3 then the question is what after bishop g4 yes after bishop g4 then h3 chases the bishop away so maybe bishop h3 to stop white from going h3 i don't know maybe ah and Mykons meskovs takes on e3 i think that's very good news very good news now the rook will come on the f file attacking the weakened squares especially f5 and f6 i kind of like that for for fresine i i think that could be good for him let's go to johan salomon playing with the white pieces against anna katane and she made a hero she was the hero of the first round uh, the fourth board defeating the gnomes number one board fresine uh fresine actually just blundered made in one fresine had a better position and then he played a move that allowed his opponent to give checkmate in one move that was uh, a shocker but i really like Johan's position he has this bishop pointing down toward the black queen side uh, and it's making life uncomfortable for uh, black so i i really like Johan's position he also has 15 minutes left he has more time now than when the game started uh, so it's looking very very good for Johan. and who is our last game ah it's of course Johan sebastian uh playing against kovalenko the latvian beast uh and uh, the player who's going to be very very tricky even to get points off of uh, and how is johann sebastian doing i think he's doing fine no bishop e4 is this a problem bishop b7 i suppose now queen d3 no knight to e5 threatens knight to d7 threatens knight to d7 so that you should be a bit careful about knight to d7 but if you go rook d8 it does seem to stop that issue rook to d8 then maybe queen c2 g6 you got to make sure that this bishop is unprotected so if white is able to go c4 at some point chasing the knight away you might lose a piece uh, as black but for the moment i don't see that being a problem what was that sound ah it's chess bay with the chair good luck for the gnomes <laughs> they need it that is that is so true that is so true Shell Guevara has just joined, wanting to catch up on the misery that is the gnomes versus the Riga magicians. The chat will probably um, get you up to speed, but the short story is complete and utter disaster. That is the short story. And we have Hansen with the black pieces against Nikons. And I hate his position right now. Something has gone wrong here, it feels. Because 
white has pretty good development and I'm scared of some knight takes d5 at the right moment. But maybe Torbjorn can go h5, h4. That's probably his idea. So white should do something to prevent that. White should do h4, I think. No, Nikons, no, yeah, Nikons goes rook e1. Rook e1 and now h5, I'm expecting. h5, queen, h3. Mm, you're kind of missing the follow-up, Torbjorn. Maybe he needs to go h4 and then hope that bishop takes g6 is never a good move. Because the thing is, if he doesn't go h5, I don't see what he's doing. If he goes a move like bishop d7, then I think knight takes d5 is very strong. Bishop d7, knight takes d5, takes back, then you go e6. And you get the discovered attack with the bishop toward the queen. Ah, but then Torbjorn maybe can go bishop takes e6, rook takes e6, queen d7. And then there's something hanging on g6. Could become very complicated. So maybe bishop d7 is possible. To me, it feels like black should go h5. But that's going to be a serious weakening of the knight on g6. And because of that, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of black's position. Let's try to find something enjoyable. Something where we can be optimistic about the gnomes. Let's look at this game. Katane has a poor pawn structure. It's isolated pawns on the queen side. So now we think Johan is going to mount an attack on the C file, trying to get at that pawn on C6. And also he has a big, big time advantage. Big time advantage. Maybe knight e4, knight c5. That's a juicy square for a knight. Uh, maybe queen b2 and just rook c1. Very pleasant choice here for, for Johann Sebastian. <laughs> Ed Pison in the chat is asking what is the record loss in Pro Chess League. He's looking to put the norms in the history books. I really hope it doesn't get that far, but um, let's have somebody find that out. What is the record loss in the Pro Chess League? I mean, if we're going to get crushed, we might as well do it properly. Um, Johann Sebastian with the black pieces is doing really, really well. Johann Sebastian, before this round, he told me that he has a positive score against Kovalenko. And it appears that the position confirms just that. He has a good position with the black pieces. This is actually very reminiscent of the game on Saturday between uh, Hikaru Nakamura with the white pieces and Jeff... Um, the, the kid, the Avonder Liang. This is similar to uh, Hikaru against Avonder Liang. And in that game, the lower rated player, Liang, actually managed to beat Hikaru. And it was a something similar to this, with a bishop against a knight. But now a5 is coming. So you got to make a decision. And for the moment, these two pawns on the queen side uh, is doing a good job of keeping the black bishop at bay. Um, so still, it's going to be very difficult to win this. And Kovalenko is so tricky. Um, you could easily lose. Uh, but, but I think objectively, this is better for Johann Sebastian. So that could be very important. We have Torbjörn. We have Torbjorn and Kovalenk uh, and Nikons has taken on g6. And I'm not sure that was a good idea. I'm not sure that was a good idea. This pawn on um, 
h4 is poisoned because if you take that pawn then comes g5 and the thing is that torbjorn isn't threatening g takes uh, h takes g3 because of the rook on h8 so uh there's not really a threat but as long as he keeps as many pawns as his opponent i'm being reasonably happy with torbjorn's position actually maybe g5 is a threat if g5 then the bishop is just buried forever so knight comes goes bishop f4 to prevent g5 from happening and then on the next move he will go queen g4 attacking the pawn on g6 hmm yeah this might be just good for white if white manages to put a piece on g5 there's no way of of kicking it out and the pawn on h4 is is in trouble it, it has strayed from the pack it's going to be difficult for black to to keep tabs on this pawn so i'm not very optimistic about torbjorn I'm very optimistic about Johan, who has put his knight on c5, but he's done something with his pawn structure. He has allowed black to attack on b3. And now if he goes rook b1, then just knight e6 exchanges off the knight on c5 and also he has blocked his diagonal for his bishop i was feeling really good about this game but now i'm i'm getting doubts maybe e5 e5 trying to open up the position toward the black king the only problem being e5 knight d5 could be an issue I'm not as happy about this position as I was earlier, but probably white is still better. Let's look at Fresinet. And Fresinet is under attack. And we all know what happened when Fresinet was under attack the last time round. It did not turn out very well. Is there a threat? Queen takes b3. No, that's not going to work. Rook takes b3. It's not going to work at this time. But if uh, Laurent goes something like queen b6, then I think rook takes uh, b3 is going to be a perpetual. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I, I quite like um, White's position. I think White is probably doing well. But you have to be very accurate at this moment. Rook b2. I don't know if that was accurate. But it's safe. It's safe and now you're threatening to go queen b6. And if black does something like queen not there but queen d4 you just exchange off the queens and go grab the e-file go with both rooks so these black rooks the black rook on a3 is actually kind of bad if the queens were exchanged the rook would just be standing here doing absolutely nothing um so black is very dependent on getting some kind of tactic in order to get a perpetual uh, because otherwise, I think his rook is just misplaced on a3. Marius in the chat is concerned about the captain going for the record of loss. Did anybody find out what the record is? I could ask the commissioner. 
Greg Shah Shahadi Shahadi. Um, you know, it's just you know, I'm just doing research. I, when we're doing commentary, we need to know the stats and you know what kind of records could be beaten, and um, if we are approaching the record of loss, I'm not saying we're going for it, but we're certainly going to be talking about it. 14 to 2? Are you kidding me? There has been a Pro Chess League match with 14 to 2? Ah, the Lagos Leatherbacks against the London Towers. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get there. I don't think we're going to get there. Uh, how about the record loss? Okay, so Greg is saying... Greg is saying that the record loss for this season is 11.5 to 4.5. So this season, 11.5, 4.5 is the record. Uh, and I'm not saying we're going for it, but we, we should be aware just in order to avoid it, I suppose. <laughs> Groger in the chat, believe in yourself, you can do it. You can do it. Okay, I'm guessing that Fresine is thinking about Queen H6, after which uh, Meskovs will go back with the Queen to E7. It feels like maybe Loha could have played F6 at some point, because now this pawn structure is actually pretty decent for Black. I mean, this is in some ways the optimal central uh, formation. Uh, pawns protecting uh the two guys in the middle who are just taking away so many squares so the pawn structure definitely favors black the only thing is his king safety is not fantastic fres going for g4 on the next move he prepares g4 by going h3 still this rook not doing much on a3 and if this rook moves, then you allow queen to b6. So in some ways, I would say that black is kind of stuck. Black is kind of stuck. It's not easy to suggest moves for black, which doesn't deteriorate his position. Let's go to another game. We have Yuhan. Yuhan has lost a big part of his advantage. He had the better pawn structure, but he allowed his B pawn to ex be exchanged for the A pawn. That's not good, but at the same time, he's still better. He has the bishop attacking on C6. He is way up on time, and maybe you can do something with the passed pawn on the A file. Rook a8. Rook a8. That's probably a good move. Go not bothering protecting the pawn on c6. Just going after the white pawn on a3. That's probably a good move. Yeah, this is going to be very tricky for, for Johan to, to get a win. But his opponent is down to two minutes. So maybe that can help. Let's go check how Torbjörn is doing. Torbjörn has played g5. That's a big move if it works. Bishop e3 still keeps the option of taking on g5 later. But at the same time, it gives black the opportunity to go back with the queen. Back with the queen, the knight d4 is slightly annoying this d4 square is fantastic for one of the black knights so turbion just goes for it i like that we're down on the score we need wins and turbion just goes for it grabs the pawn on b2 now nikons takes on g5 i do not understand the significance 
of waiting, going with the in-between move, bishop e3. Um, let's try to suggest a move. How about bishop takes g5? No! Rook takes f3. Things just got interesting. And now rook f7, probably. Rook f7? Hmm. I don't see another move. Because you need to prevent bishop f6 next. Ah, actually, you can go knight takes e5. Knight takes e5 would then threaten the white queen. So that's interesting. It's certainly a lot of action going on. Anand is losing his second game. Will the person convincing me to pick him on fantasy please reveal your identity? And Torgan goes rook f5. That feels like a terrible move to me. Terrible move. What is the plan against bishop f6? What is the plan against bishop f6? I don't see it. Rook f5. I think that's a big blunder from Torbjörn. Ah, but now I realize his problem. His problem was that if knight takes e5, then queen d4 is quite strong. Queen d4 would be very strong. But I think he should have gone back to f7 to protect on g7. Instead, after rook f5, isn't bishop f6 just crushing? Bishop f6? I guess Torbjörn is going to sacrifice an exchange. Torbjörn is going to take with his rook on f6 and then bring the queen back. Bishop f6 just played. And then queen back. So Torbjörn has sacrificed... Uh, an exchange and what's going on in Johann Sebastian's game this has become very very complicated and Kovalenko being such a speed monster is up on time Kovalenko is up on time uh, the position is equal in material but not equal in anything else King h2 is a good move good move hiding that king on h2 away from any queen c1 checks what is johann sebastian going to do <sighs> kovalenko is such a beast so the last time we were here uh, it was looking pretty good for black and in the meantime uh, johann sebastian has been spending all of his time and ending up getting a worse position. But on the other hand, are there any threats? Maybe black can go c7. But the thing is, c7, a5, the white pawn is just as fast, if not faster, than the black pawn. And uh, Johann Sebastian always have to, has to make sure that he's protecting the g7 square so that he avoids the checkmate. Fresine has won his game. That is excellent news. And as I was saying, uh, this rook on a3 was just stuck. It didn't contribute in the game at all. And Fresine was able to exploit that and win the game. And Johan has a losing position. Wow. Johan has lost a pawn and his opponent has an, a very active king. This is shocking. Can Anna Katane go and make two out of two against the top Norwegian two boards? That would be sensational. That would be sensational. I'm gonna I'm gonna go update the score. At least we get one point. Uh, but at the moment we have a lot of bad positions in the other games.
Gustav is going, yay, Anna Katane. I don't know. This is the gnomes broadcast. Uh, we want to hear people go, go gnomes. Cheering on our opponents is not really. Yeah, but on the other hand, I mean, what are we going to do? I mean, we're getting crushed. Anna Katane taking out the two top grandmasters of the Norway gnomes. That is just impressive. Very impressive. A6. Johan is trying to run with the pawn, but that pawn is not going anywhere. That pawn is not going anywhere. I think he had the option of going E2 there. I think he had the option of she had the option of going E2. Chose to go King D4 instead. Let's go to Kovalenko. Kovalenko, Johan Sebastian has two seconds left. Johann Sebastian has two seconds left and White's King is on E5. White's King is on E5. Two seconds left. The King is running. The King is running. The King is hiding behind the black pawn. The King is hiding out. And do you have another check? No, there's no more checks. He gives up the Rook. He gets another check, but that's it. No more checks for Johann Sebastian Christensen. And Kovalenko has taken his second win. Kovalenko, such a beast. So that means it's now 1 to 5. Okay, how are we doing with Torbjorn? Torbjorn sacrificed an exchange. And he's doing pretty well. Torbjorn is doing pretty well. He's an exchange down, but it's a complicated position. Both players are down on time. And the white king is not too comfortable. I mean, we could see a bishop getting on this diagonal, creating trouble for Nikons. Now knight b5 attacking the pawn. Torbjorn also has a passed pawn on the a file. I quite like Torbjorn's position. I think it might be easier to play in this time scrabble. But white cannot push his pawn without weakening his king position. Uh, and black can push his pawn. Rook c7, just a safe move there from Torbjorn. Maybe it's a bit too timid. I want you to attack. We need attack. Let's go with the pawn, I think. Let's try to make a new queen. No, he goes back. And he's not really doing any progress. King f1. Probably he's intending rook h8. So he realized that he needs to have the option of playing rook h8. Check. Then rook h8. But now Nikons is just going to go for the draw. No. Nikons playing for the win. The Latvians are trying to humiliate the gnomes and succeeding pretty well because Katana has won her second game. Katana has won her two first games. The board number four defeating both the board number uh, one and the board number two on the gnomes. And the chat is discussing whether the manager is to blame. Yeah, I, yeah, maybe, I don't know. The manager could get in trouble here. So Torbjörn has two pawns for the exchange. That's pretty good. The only question is whether or not this passed pawn on the H file can create any trouble. And the answer is probably it can. It's quite, this past pawn is going to create some trouble. I don't think you should go there. I think, do not go there. Torbjorn, uh, no. Ah, Bishop h7, big mistake. h6, I think you have to go rook c8. Try to stop this pawn. 
with rook h8. Uh, but instead, Torbjorn goes bishop h7, trying to block the pawn. But that allows rook d7. And even though material was pretty good for black, he, he the, the pawn started running and it never got stopped. <clears throat> the chat is calling for my resignation. The chat is calling for my resignation. Yeah, I don't know what to say. At this point, maybe I should resign. I mean, this is... Yeah, actually, Hofster is is, uh, is saying Katana is probably cheating. And you're going to get a timeout for that one. She's definitely not cheating. She was much worse in both games. But she managed to turn it around like a champ. Costas is suggesting that I should implement a fining system. Find the players for playing poorly. I don't know if that's going to work. The Jugger is saying that either the manager or the players has to go. Somebody's got to go, he says. And Anand is giving away more points. Anand not coping with the internet chess. And I want, I mean, if somebody's got to resign, I want it to be the guy recommending me to pick Anand for my fantasy team. I want your head on a plate. How about a good halftime speech hammer, says Mr. Freeze in the house. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, we're down seven to one. I don't think any speech can fix that. Okay, I'm going to do a... Johann Sebastian is promising two wins in the last games. Johann Sebastian promising two wins in the last games. Well, I guess that's something. We have the next round in, um, in two more minutes. Two more minutes until the next round. And HT92 is suggesting positive reinforcement. Tell them there's free pizza if they win. Okay. Free pizza for everyone if you win has been submitted in the team chat.
Kolomsa suggests uh, awarding the others with Hussein Bole me Brunost. And Fresine comments to the free pizza. How generous. I think he knows it's very atypical of me to promise other people free stuff. Aryan is taking a break, common ball. He still goes to school and he has been, he needs to prioritize school for a little bit. So that's why he's not playing today. I cannot promise KFC for everyone because there's no KFC in Norway. I know, right? It's the biggest scandal ever. Uh, we have Johann Sebastian Christensen with the white pieces against Anna Katane. And um, yeah, this is going to be a tricky one. No more thinking we can beat the 2300 woman international master. At this point, we know that she's very dangerous. Very dangerous indeed. We have Torbjörn Hansen, our fourth board, playing against Meskovs, their third board. And even before we started, I did say that Meskovs was going to be important. The third board performances was going to be crucial to how this match goes. Uh, so we'll certainly... Uh, keep a close eye on this one. Kovalenko with the white pieces against Johan Solomon. Oh, that's going to be very, very tough. But at this point, we actually, we actually need to win with black against Kovalenko. Uh, and that is very difficult stuff. Very difficult stuff. B5 and then knight c5 from Johan. Getting the bishop. But um, it's not clear what, whether getting this bishop is such uh, something to be really happy about anyhow. I have been discussing these positions quite a lot with Aryan. So I would assume that uh, Johan is also familiar with, with this opening. We have the last game is Fresine with black pieces against Nikons. And we actually need a win. We need a win with the black pieces against a very strong, solid uh, opponent in Nikons. Knight f6. This is an interesting Spanish variation. I would expect white to go d4 trying to open up for the rook toward the black king. Farhan Ahmed is saying that either the gnomes will set the record for getting crushed by the highest score or you will make the most legendary comeback. Uh, and he's saying the latter is looking less likely. Yeah, I'll have to agree with that. It's not looking good for the gnomes. Knight g5. That feels like a mistake to me. That feels like a mistake. How about queen d7 now? And then black is very well developed. And after d4, you can just ignore this pawn and castle. Knight g5. I'm, I don't really like that move from, from Nikons. I think that, that feels wrong. It feels like black will get a big edge in development. So definitely chances to win this one for uh, Fresine. We have Solomon. Solomon with the black pieces pushing his pawns up on the queen side. 
white keeps his good square on d5 and it's not clear how how Johan will be able to challenge that knight and, and kick it kick it away maybe he needs to do something like g6 and f5 i would think bishop g5 is quite reminiscent of some sveshnikov variations so probably now he's just gonna put the bishop on h6 and have it point down toward uh, the squares on d2 and, and c1 let's take a look at Johann Sebastian Johann Sebastian has been playing one of his special tricky speed chess openings after d5 bishop b5 interesting d4 knight to e2 bishop d6 and now after knight g3 uh, both players have a decent position both players have a good position that happens hammer only plays when there are no other options says jpk and that is correct We need a frequently asked questions on why Hammer is not playing. Says um, Dr. Spot. Yaya Niha says, give them a sip of Mölisch Tran. That should do it. I don't even know what Tran is in English, but it's the yucky stuff that's good for you. Uh, Anand is playing against the Norwegians. Anand is playing against the Norwegians, of course. So when Anand is doing poorly, the other Norwegians, the Oslo trolls, are doing well. That's actually quite quite good for us because the trolls are not are kind of in the bottom of the league, uh, whereas the Mumbai movers are equal to us. So actually, it's good for us that the Mumbai movers are not doing very well. But somebody who is doing well is Igor Kovalenko. He has gotten the knight on d5. He now reinforced it with his bishop on b3. And he's looking very good. I, I already said earlier, uh, if I was allowed, I definitely would have picked Kovalenko as my first board choice. Okay, what happened here? Queen d7, d4. And now I was thinking castles should be a good move. But instead, Fresine goes e takes d4. That's a big, big move big move allowing the knight into e6 and now Fress has gone knight to e5 wow interesting stuff from Fress. maybe he's going for game of the week if knight takes g7 king f7 c takes d4 i think he's intending to go knight f3 he's just gonna give up the knight on the f3 square and uh, when white takes, he's going to ruin his, his pawns in front of the king. And it's going to be really, really dangerous for white. So that looks like a good idea to me. That looks like a really good idea. And if knight takes king f7, knight f5, not there, but there, then you have d3 attacking the queen and also eliminating the, uh, the diagonal defense uh, toward the king on f5 ah uh, but then maybe you have queen b3 check this has become very very complicated this has become very complicated but i'm pretty optimistic about uh Fresine's chances in this game let's go to kovalenko kovalenko has given up a pawn that's strange 
Ah, and it was at the moment I actually was praising his position. Uh, Johan just made an exchange and took a pawn. I like that. I really like that. I think when you're suffering, it's better to suffer with a pawn up. Queen a4. Not sure I like that move. Not sure. But it's ambitious. It's very ambitious. I think at, when you play a4, Johan is basically saying, I'm playing for a win. I'm playing for a win. I'm trying to lock this pawn on a3 so that I can attack it in the future. Ambitious, but maybe wrong. Who knows? Rook c8 looks like a normal move, protecting its buddy on c3. Fresine has... Uh, no, Nikans has taken on g7, and Fres has played king f7. So now knight f5 I'm expecting, because d3, then queen b3 is check. Maybe Laurent missed that it's check. Ah, probably he missed that, because now it's looking tricky for black. That check is really a savior. Mm, that check is really annoying. Is there something else he can do? Maybe he can go rook to g8. It allows knight to h6, but then maybe king f8. Knight takes g8. Can you even go knight to f3 in that scenario? Hmm. Maybe you also, maybe just if rook here, then maybe just queen check first. This queen check is really annoying because it's it's really distracting all the pieces compared to what they would like to do. Mm, I changed my mind. I think Fres might be in trouble. Fres might be in trouble. We have Zepet in the chat and he's rooting for his Polish compatriot Anna Katane. Ah, so Anna is married to a Latvian, but she's actually Polish by birth. Uh, and what is going on in this position? I really don't know. I really don't know. It's looking tricky for both players. Knight takes f7. I would seriously consider knight takes f7. Rook takes back. And then maybe d4. Kicking the bishop back. Okay, knight f3. I like that. Not giving up the knight, but having it back in defense. Knowing that on the next move, you're ready to go d4. And then knight takes c3. This pawn on c3 is in big trouble. It's very doubtful that it's going to survive another couple of moves. What happened to the gnomes? Asks Cabo Kings. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Something went very, very bad. Very early on. Uh, we haven't been looking at the uh, Meskovs against Hansen game. So we need a win here from Hansen. And it's looking good. It's looking good. I think we're able. Bishop takes a6. That's a pawn. That's a pawn for Mr. Hansen and the Norway gnomes. I like it. White is definitely better with the pawn up. The question is, what happens on queen a7? Queen a7, what happens? I'm not sure. Queen a7, maybe king h2. And at some point, go queen g3 to attack the pawn on e5. Yes, I like that. I like that. Torbjörn is a pawn up. Torbjörn is on my fantasy team. He, he, I think he's been doing really well for the gnomes earlier. So I thought uh, him as a fourth board is uh, a big thing 
for fantasy. Uh, um, probably I wouldn't have picked Anna anyhow, uh, but but I I wasn't allowed to. As the manager of the gnomes, I'm not allowed to pick players we're playing against. Uh, and for this round, that is unfortunate because uh, they are picking us apart. But not in this game, not in this game. Torbjorn is uh, definitely better against Meskox with the pawn up. We can make a bit of a comeback here. I think Johann Sebastian, this pawn on c3 is doomed. This pawn on th c3 is doomed. So I think we can win the two bottom boards. We can win the two bottom boards. And then the question is, what is Johan thinking about here? Ah, it's because my I haven't updated the position. Uh, so what's going on? Kovalenko trying to mount an attack somehow. But Johan with his h4 move. I like this move. I like it a lot. Johan is a pawn up. And it's not clear how Kovalenko should exploit that. So Kovalenko in the opening had a better position thanks to the square on d5. But at the moment, he is unable to get his knight to the d5 square because he needs to go via the e3. And if the knight comes there, the bishop is going to say, no, my friend, this far, but no further. Uh, I don't like taking this one. I think that was unnecessary from Johan because white gets some extra options to go h4 and also some options maybe at some point to get a rook on the on the f file so i i do not like the decision to take on g3 but i think his position is decent The pizza is working, says HT92. Yes, thank you. That was a good tip. That was a good tip. Try to tempt them with free pizza. If we could get three wins in those games, it would be huge. And then the final game is Fresine. And I was being pessimistic about his chances. But something has happened since then. Something has happened. How is material? Four pawns, six pawns. Fres is a pawn down. But look at that rook pointing toward the black king. And look at these white pieces stuck in their starting position. They are not getting into play. Maybe Fres can win this. Can the gnomes sweep this round to win 4-0? That would be sensational. And that would actually mean that we have a proper chance of uh, tying or even winning the match in the last round. A 4-0 sweep would be huge. Rook e2 protects against the main threat of queen takes f2. But surely Fress will create some other some other ideas. How about just knight takes e5? Knight takes e5. Opens the, the line, the file. For the rook. Takes one of his opponent's pawns. Also, it means that the knight maybe can go to f3. I like it. I mean, if we have the option to take a pawn, take it. Just take those pawns. Yes! Fres takes on e5. There's actually a proper chance of sweeping this round with 4-0. There's an actual chance of sweeping 4-0. Queen takes b7. Now Fres is going to play knight f3. Knight f3 followed by rook takes g2. That's going to be a game of the week candidate. For Laurent Fresinet. He's crushing it. Maybe he's gotten some messages from MVL. Because this play is nowhere near 
what he was doing in the first round. This is crushing play from the Frenchman. Check and sacrifice the rook. It looks good to me. It looks very good to me. He's just doing the final calculations, making sure that there's no way uh, White can escape this tactic. Check, 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 check. There's some lines with uh, Rook takes E7. Some lines with Rook takes E7. So he needs to calculate what happens. But I don't see the queen is really then the only attacking piece left uh, for white. So I don't see how he's going to escape these threats. Knight f3 followed by rook takes g2 looks crushing to me. And he goes for it. Knight f3 check. King moves. Actually, probably he has to go king f1. King f1. Maybe you can take on h2. But no, don't do that. Go for rook takes g2. Rook takes g. And he's gone for it. Wow. Fantastic attacking play from Loja Fresine. This is going to be a game of the week candidate. The way the white queen side is just completely undeveloped. And then he's sacrificing pieces on the other side. Removing the pawns defending the white king. And it looks good to me. It looks good. I think he's going to take this one. I think he's going to take this one. And Nikons is thinking... Nikons is thinking. He's trying to figure out whether he can get away with, well, anything really uh, here. But I don't see it. I don't see it. He has to start by taking on e7. Then king takes. Queen takes c7. And then the question is, where should we put the black king? Where do we put the black king in that line? Maybe, actually it might be tricky. Where do you put the king? So now the big question, where does black put the king? Uh, I, I actually, actually, I don't see it. I don't see it. Anand is on one and a half out of three. Everyone's fantasy, mine included, is um, is going to shreds. How does Fresine avoid the checks from the white queen? That is the big question right now. How about idea? How about king? e6 queen c4 king f6 no that's a bad idea because then you can just take the rook because the queen controls the square on g8 and i need that square to give a check so how about king e6 queen c4 d5 d5 queen takes a6 king f7 Queen A B seven check King G six King G six um, and then Rook takes when the King is on the G file and then I give a check on G four check on G four Rook to the E file but then Bishop E three. Actually, I don't see it. It's very tricky for Fresine to avoid these 
checks. No! No, are you kidding me? Queen exchange. Wow, that is sick. He's going he's going with the knight to c2, trapping the undeveloped rook on a1. So what was just a massive attacking position, suddenly he's changing his advantage. He's trading in his massive attack just to pick up a rook in the corner. I said no because I thought, well, this is terrible. But maybe this is absolutely brilliant. The rook is trapped. Press exchanges a queen with a... He was a bishop and a pawn down. And still he went for the queen exchange. And now he's getting the rook. He's getting the rook. The big question is whether or not cannot white go and trap the knight in the corner? To me, it really looks like that knight is not seeing daylight again. This game is not over. This game is not over at all. And Johan, Johan has beaten Kovalenko. Big news for Johan Salomon. Johan has beaten Kovalenko. That is a huge win for the gnomes. Huge win for the gnomes. Johan beats Kovalenko. And we have, let's see, Johann Sebastian still hasn't picked up the pawn on c3. Johann Sebastian still hasn't picked up this pawn. But Katana is down to under a minute on the clock. And this pawn is still in trouble. I mean, you would think that that pawn cannot survive another couple of moves. On the other hand, I did say the very same thing more than 10 moves ago. So the pawn has survived longer than you would think. But surely now it's reaching the end of its days. Knight takes e4, threatens the rook on d6. If the rook moves, then there's d6, check. There's a bishop on this diagonal with the discovered check. Uh, what happens now? Bishop c7, just take that one. Take the rook. You're going to be lots of material up. Uh, you... Ooh. Ah, because the rook cannot move without allowing d6. I don't like this rook takes c3. I think it's overly fancy. I think Johann Sebastian is showing off. Uh, I don't think that was a good idea. But I still think he's going to win the game. But no points from the manager for showing off. When you're given a rook, just take it already. Uh, we have... Uh, Nikon's trying to trap Fresine's queen. And Fres is just going to give up the knight. Maybe he's not even giving up the knight. He's just going to let the knight stay there. He's going to go rook g1. He's going to push this h pawn. And then he's going to take the pawn on h2. And if he gets all of that, he doesn't care whether or not his knight comes back. Because he will have a passed pawn on the h file. On the other side of the board where white cannot get back bishop bishop f4 so the bishop is coming to g3 the bishop is going into a defensive position i think that's a good move from nikons nikons is still fighting let's see how is tourbillon doing with his pawn up tourbillon is no longer a pawn up that is not good news not good news. Torbjorn is not a pawn up. But on the other hand, do we think that this pawn on c2 is going to survive for much longer? I don't think so. I don't think it's going to survive. I don't think it's going to survive. Rook c1, rook takes c2. That pawn is going to drop off. So momentarily, Torbjorn is not up on material. But I think he's going to manage to take the pawn on c2 i think he's gonna get this pawn i think he's gonna get this pawn we might actually sweep 4-0 in this round king f5 this is the crucial game if the knight gets out of a1 i think fresh will get both the the game of the week award as well as putting the gnomes within fighting distance 
before the last four games. Actual score. I have not updated with Johan Sebastian. Johan Sebastian has won his game. So it's 3-7. to seven. We were down 7-1, to one, but now it's 3-7. to seven, And we have two good-looking positions remaining. Two good-looking positions remaining. Age 4 from Fresine. Probably now age 4 from Nikons. Nikons. Will he go age 4? Yes. Do not play King G4. King G4 F3 check would lose the rook. Fresine avoids losing the rook. And now the king can come to e4 on the next move. b5. Nikon's giving himself a passed pawn on the h file. And now king e4. And Johann Sebastian is going crazy in the team chat upon learning that Johann Salomon has defeated Kovalenko. The great Latvian player on board one has been defeated by the great Norwegian player on board two. Rook takes h4. Rook takes h4. He's giving up. He's giving up the... What, what is going on? Rook a4. Rook a4. If knight c3, he's going to go with a pawn. Knight c3, h4, takes rook, h3, h3. H4 coming up. H4 coming up. H4. What is going on? H4. This pawn is promoting. This pawn. No. No. It's not promoting. Rook A5. Um, maybe it was promoting. I'm not sure what's going on. H4 still a big threat. H4 still a big threat. Now the pawn is coming. And now if king f3, then d4 is going to be very tricky to face. But there's not a lot of pieces left. There's not a lot of pieces left. If white is able to fetch this pawn on h4, he will have very decent drawing chances. How about rook a3? No, rook a3, then bishop b2. That's not going to help. Yes, it is going to... No, it's not going to help. I thought maybe you can give the rook for the knight, but the king is within the square. So the king can stop this pawn on its own. Man, I... I H4? H4? Was that possible? H4, knight takes... H3? To me, it looks like that pawn is just going to queen. No, knight back. Knight back, h2, knight e2. Oh, that was very clever. The knight gets back into g3, creates a... So he had to move the rook, and he did. Both players are, are fighting very well in this game. Both players fighting very well. I think Nikons will make a draw. Nikons will make a draw. D3, D3, two passed pawns. Two passed pawns. It's very difficult to stop both passed pawns. Check. King goes back. King goes back. To G6. Why does the king go to G6? And now King E3, probably. King E3. The king stops this pawn. The knight stops this pawn. King G4. It's a queen, no? D2 was a queen. D2 was... and But also he blundered his bishop. D2 was a queen. Fress went for the bishop. That was a huge blunder by Nikons. I think it, that was a move that lost in like three different ways. And now Fresine is going to play d2 and he's going to win this game. Fresine is going to play d2 and win this game. And it's a resignation. A very eventful game. And Torbjörn, Torbjörn has won his game. Torbjörn has won his game. Wow, what a comeback. What a comeback.
What a comeback. The Norway Gnomes being 7-1 to one down. Sweeps the third match. And wins it 4-0. to nil. We're within striking distance. Before the last couple of games. Big, big wins. Pizza. Pizza. People are saying pizza in the Twitch chat. Uh, people are saying pizza in the, in the team chat. All the chats are going pizza, pizza, pizza. Wow. What a comeback. What a comeback. No, no pizza unless they get points. I mean, if we end up losing this match, there's no pizza. We need another very good round to finish off. MVL did not watch the third round. He stopped watching after we were down 7-1. to one. And that means, let's hope MVL stays away. Apparently, he is the one bringing the team bad luck. Uh, because without him, we swept 4-0. Yusevic is saying, it might be the greatest comeback in pro league history. Yes, certainly. If we manage to come back from 7 to 1, that would be insane. I mean, that would be different level. Different level. Wow. Wow. The Gnomes still needs a very good last round, says Hofmeister. Yes, that is true. We're, we're going to need... Um, we're going to need... Uh, I'm going to do an announcement on chess.com, actually. The Norway Gnomes might make the greatest comeback in pro... Chess League history. They were down seven to one, but are fighting back. Follow the final four games with GM Hammer. Twitch.tv shush. Big, big stuff going on. And thank you to Pete for subscribing. MVL may have left the building. We certainly hope so, because he has not been bringing luck to the uh, Norwegian team. And I misspelled greatest. I said I misspelled greatest. Oh man. Uh, that's what you get for trying to multitask in your second language. But the gnomes were down seven to one. It's now seven to five. This might be the greatest comeback in pro chess league history. This might be the greatest comeback in pro chess league history. Jungle Rundle was one of many who left and K 
came back now to be surprised by the fact that the gnomes are still in it. We're down by two games, but the way we managed to come back with 4-0, uh, that was pretty, pretty special. And we will have another game in one minute. One more minute until the next game. What happens if it's a draw, asks Hovmeister. If it's a draw, then both uh, teams get half a point in the standings. And as we all know, half a point is better than no points. Which is what we would have gotten if uh, we had lost. If we had just continued playing the same way. So... Um, so yeah, uh, half a point better than uh, all the points. No, worse than all the points, but better than no points. Uh, and we have a proper shot at this time to actually get something out of this match. We started out being down four to nil, four to nil, uh, but we're, we're back in it. And we have games starting. The number one game, Fresine, against Igor Kovalenko and Fres has told me in the team chat that his score against Kovalenko is zero wins and nine losses. So Fresine is getting killed by Kovalenko on a regular basis. Uh, so I'm not feeling massively optimistic about this, but we are down with two games. Uh, so with the white pieces, Fresine is going to have to show something special uh, in this matchup. We have Johan Salomon with the white pieces. Johan just managed to beat Igor Kovalenko with black. He beat Kovalenko with black. And I mean, compared to that, uh, Arthur Nikans is a walk in the park with the white pieces. We can really hope for and... Well, essentially, we need, we need Johan to win this game. How are we doing with Katane? Katane has been creating a lot of trouble for the Gnomes today. And she's playing against Torbjörn Hansen. And Torbjörn is on my fantasy team. I need some points from you, Torbjörn. And Torbjörn is playing a dubious uh, opening uh, but he's quite tricky. Torbjorn and his dubious openings are well known to be tricky. Maybe he's going h5. Yes, he's going h5. This is amazing. This is a line which was played by one of Torbjorn's teammates. Uh, and he played it against me in some blitz game, I think. And I, I told him afterwards, this move was very interesting. And it's a shocking move. It's going to make Katana think for a long time. Normally you go G6. But here Torbjorn has gone H5. And as it turns out, it's not actually that easy to create an attack against the Black King side. Because anytime you go G4, that pawn is just going to be taken. So Katana is going for the Queen side castling. And then, well, let's see what happens. Castles, maybe knight b6, knight d5, harassing the bishop on e3. This is an interesting opening from Torbjorn. And then we have Johann Sebastian with the black pieces against Meskovs. Now, this Meskovs guy, he won his first game against Johan, but then now he's lost two games in a row. So Meskovs lost two games in a row, and hopefully. Johann Sebastian can make that three. Johann Sebastian could make that three in a row for Meskovs. How are we doing? Uh, Fresine with the white pieces against Kovalenko. Is this a good opening? Is this a bad opening? It's very, very difficult to tell. There's a bishop where black has a knight. 
Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. Probably Kovalenko will be able to take on d4 and then he's going to use his knight to attack the pawn on d4. In the meantime, Fraz will try to exploit his um, space advantage on the king side. So maybe we will see something like g3 takes, not like that, takes, takes, knight c6, bishop e3. I think something like that is um, probable. And then who knows what's going to happen. It's a, a very interesting position. Chances for both sides. Solomon has gotten the bishop pair against Arthur Nikans. So Solomon playing the long con, trying to win this in the end game with the bishop pair. Solomon in the living room with the bishop pair might be the killer for the gnomes today. What is going on? Bishop d2 from Fresine. Not a shocking move. Not maybe he's trying to go rook c1 at one moment. Let's go to Torbjorn. Torbjorn, where what is the knight doing on f8? I'm not sure. He just played bishop e6. He's giving up the pawn on h5. I do not like that. I dislike that. What are we gonna do about this girl? tearing us apart katane if she wins this one she will have made three points against the nose that is extremely impressive uh take this one then bishop g4 but then bishop e2 protects ah oh, now i see what's going on knight takes h5 there's queen a5 that is such a sneaky move. Very sneaky move from Torbjorn. Queen a5 attacking the knight on h5 while also attacking on a2. That is some sneaky, sneaky stuff going on. That is some sneaky stuff. So c4 from Katane. How about b5? How about b5? b5 c5 i don't know what's going on maybe move the bishop back try to just run with the a pawn no he goes g6 g6 that is that is ice cold ice cold from torbjorn you would think he did, he didn't want to weaken his king position further but he's going g6 he might even go f5 he might even go f5. No, probably not. Probably not. I think probably at this point b5 or a5. Just start running the pawns down the board. Is going to be an interesting idea. We'll be back uh, to this one. Let's check out Kovalenko. Kovalenko. Bishop e3. Bishop e3. I like that move. Good move from Fresine. If you take on d4, I'm not going to take with my pawn. I'm going to take with the knight. And then I'm going to use this d4 square in the game. Yes, I like this from Fresine. Now, g3. Uh, maybe he has to be concerned about queen to e2. g3 is not a hurry. We're not in a hurry to play g3. Maybe do something else. Maybe queen d1. Queen d1, just bringing the queen back, uh, making a useful move, protecting some squares on the king's side. And then queen d1 followed by g3, h3, g4, gradually chasing the way knight away from f5. That looks good to me. That looks very good to me. 
And actually, now after age five, I changed my mind. At this point, I'm going to take back with the pawn. Because I know that later in the game, I will be able to play g4, kicking the knight away. So I, I would, yeah, I, I think at this point, I would actually take back with the pawn. Start out with queen d1. Okay, rook b3. I thought about that move. But I thought knight b6 and attacking the pawn on a4 would be annoying. On the other hand, if Fres manages to get his rook to b4, Five and then play b3 then the bl white black position the white position is very very solid and the rook is well it's not doing a magnificent job on b5 but it's doing something it's being uh, a bit annoying to uh, to black thank you to martin martin for subscribing we have a question about Johan. Johan playing king f1. Can you explain? Yes. The king is better placed on f1 than on g1. Uh, it's basically just a, a preparation to play uh, rook e2 and I think double on the uh, e-file. In some variations, black would have had knight f3 check. So he's also sidestepping those uh, possibilities. Uh, Johan is, I would say, slightly better with the bishop pair, but it's not much. I think he should go back with his rook to the first rank, because the rook isn't really doing much here. Maybe it is doing something there. How about bishop g5? Bishop g5 followed by rook h4. No, I don't like that. I don't like that, because black will always have knight f8. To defend so you're never never really gonna attack the the king i think yuan should go just back with the rook have the option of going rook e1 and at some point he's gonna go h4 and bishop h3 getting that bishop on a good diagonal he might actually just do it right now just do these uh moves actually uh, Knight f6 followed by h5 might be a thing. Maybe he can go queen f3 first. Yeah, I, I like Johan's position. I think Johan is better. Uh, but there's still a lot of chess left to be played. Let's go back to the uh, Frenchman, Fresinet. Uh, so he has done uh, his plan of putting the rook on b5. But the thing is, now there's a black knight coming around to capture said rook. Hmm. That, that's a weird but effective maneuver. The thing is, the rook is not very good on b5. It's not really helping out. It's not really helping out much. So now there's a possibility of playing c4 and then going with the rook. So I think essentially what Laurent is doing is that he has sacrificed this rook on b5. If black chooses to, he can capture this rook. But the thing is, it's going to come at a very high cost. Because it's going to remove one of the main defensive pieces black has in his position. Okay, so Kovalenko chooses to open up. Fres takes back with a knight. And then rook c4 attacking on a4. So I, I, I guess I mentioned this earlier. That maybe he should play queen d1 at some moment. One of the good things about that move would have been defending the pawn on a4. And now black is coming in a big way. Black is coming with the knight as well. So there's a lot of black pieces going after the pawn on a4. It's still a very complicated game. And Fres is down five minutes on the clock. He's down five minutes on the clock. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. How is Torbjorn doing? Torbjorn, his opponent has the bishop pair. His opponent has an extra pawn in the center. But it's a tricky, tricky situation. And it's opposite uh, side castling. It's 
very difficult to predict how this is going to go. Maybe a3? No. Maybe take, take, and then a3. Yes, I like that better. Maybe even something like bishop d5. It's actually a very difficult strategic position. I cannot tell who is better. Uh, but Torbjörn is seven minutes up on the clock. Torbjörn is seven minutes up on the clock. So it's still unclear. It's difficult to predict. But we have a big time advantage. Let's go to the next game. Johann Sebastian. Johann Sebastian is getting crushed. It would appear. Johann Sebastian is down one pawn, two pawn, three pawn, four pawns. Oh my gosh. Johann Sebastian is down four pawns. Are you kidding me? He's down four pawns. He has some kind of attack going on. Can he do something with this attack? There's a queen. There's a bishop pointing toward the king. And there's a knight which can contribute in some fashion. Hmm. So maybe knight takes f4. Knight takes f4. You need to take back. And then pawn takes f4. How about that? Just pawn takes f4. No. Then there's rook takes g7 and checkmate. Hmm. Yeah, so I guess he needs to go knight takes, pawn takes, queen g4 check, king f1, queen h3 check, king e2, and then take on f4. But at that point, you're running out of attacking pieces. You're running out of attacking pieces. How about bishop takes f2? Bishop takes f2, king takes, rook takes, queen takes h2. I don't know. Alex uh, in the chat is saying, when I learn chess, I learned that you sack a pawn. And if that doesn't work, you sack another pawn. And I think that's essentially what Johann Sebastian has done, right? I mean, he started, maybe he started losing a pawn. And at that point he thought, well, I might as well give up a couple of other pawns to get an attack going. But at the moment, the attack is not going very well. There's a severe lack of attacking pieces. Yeah, unfortunately. Probably bishop takes f2 is the best shot. But I don't really see it working out. Actually, maybe e takes f4. e takes f4. Rook takes g7. King f8. I don't see how that's going to be checkmate. And then you have the threat of going f3. That could be interesting, actually. Maybe the problem is e takes f4, you play knight takes e8. And then there's also the threat with the d6, discovered attack. The queen joining the fun against a pretty defenseless black king. Okay, he goes bishop takes f2, check. And now white has to go king f3. But the thing is, after king f3, I couldn't find a follow-up for Johann Sebastian. Maybe now you go e takes f4. How about now e takes f4? Maybe e takes f4, you can go knight e4. Just removing the knight, getting it back into defense. And at the same time, starting to threaten d6, discovered check. White needs to remove this knight somehow. 
in order to be able to give the discovered check, getting the queen back into the game. Jake Lones is suggesting queen h5, king g2, knight takes f4. Is that going to work? Maybe. It might. But at that point, you have given up so many pieces. I mean, at that point, you're two pieces down. So you would think that the king could escape somehow, give up the rook. And just win anyhow. Johan is going to lose, somebody says in the chat. Johan is going to lose. Yeah, I think he's referring to Johan Sebastian. Because Johan is still better with in his game against Nikons. I think this is looking reasonably promising for Johan. How are we doing on the other boards? Ooh, Kovalenko, Kovalenko, Kovalenko. Such a beast. The white king is in huge trouble. What has happened? Wow, Kovalenko playing h4, g5. Such a beast. Opening up the position around the white king. b3, rook back. There's an exchange, knight d5. So far, so good. This doesn't look terrible for white. Maybe just take the pawn? I don't know. But the thing is that the queen is stuck in the corner. And that's not a good thing. Knight g6. Great move. Knight takes f4. Check. Yeah. And Fress is a pawn down in addition to his king being absolutely dead. So Fress is losing his game on board one. And Johann Sebastian... It would take a minor miracle for him to survive this. But worst case scenario, at this point, White can just rep repeat moves. A draw here is good enough to win the match for the Latvian Riga Magicians. Let's look at some of the other games. Torbjörn still has a very complicated game against Katane. Probably white is a bit better, uh, but maybe not. Maybe b4 is a good move. Very complex game. Johan is still a bit better, but at this point, he absolutely needs to win it. Uh, and even if he wins it, it's not, it's not going to guarantee that the gnomes are able to... Uh, to tie up the match. Cabo Kings is not happy with our French mercenary. He says, Fres does not do the best job on the scoreboard. Yeah, no, Fres has not been uh, massive for the gnomes, unfortunately. He got two points against the Oslo Trolls. And if he loses this game, if he loses this game, he's going to, well, he's going to be on two points. So it's not great, but it's not a disaster either. But he's fighting. He's fighting, trying to attack the pawn on g5, forcing Kovalenko to go back. Maybe he can set up some kind of fortress with this knight. Knight takes h4. Knight takes h4. Is Fres going to save a draw? Is Fresine going to save a draw? Queen a3, knight f3, queen takes a4, knight takes g5. That is good news. Fres... I mean, it's 10 minutes against 20 seconds, but Fress is fighting. He's fighting for a draw and he's not that far away. Keeping the queens on the board, there's always going to be chances for perpetual. Okay, we're still alive. We're still alive in this match. If Fressiné makes a draw, we are still alive. 
And Torbjorn, Torbjorn needs to win. I'm not sure how he's going to make it. But his opponent is being attacked on the long diagonal with the Black Queen. And she's down to one minute on the clock. Let's go back to Fresine. Fresine, Fresine has gotten a pawn back. He's gotten a pawn back, but now pawn takes e5. Pawn takes e5, knight takes e5, knight queen d6 is going to be a killer. So the big question is what happens if you take on e5? And he's done it. And Fres takes back. No. Fres takes back. And then he allows the discovered check. Wow, it wasn't a mistake. He had seen that coming. He decided that this discovered check is not dangerous. But it is dangerous. What is going on? It is dangerous. It looks very dangerous. King f6. What is going on? We need a draw in this game to stay alive. To have a chance. H4. How about you just take that pawn? Take on h4. What happens? What happens? I don't know. This is complicated stuff. Take on h4, maybe take back. No, check. Fres gives a check and then queen f2. So now there's no longer a discovered attack on the long diagonal. And the white queen is coming to h4. And that's a big threat. Queen takes h4 is a big threat. Anybody could win this. I mean... If, if Kovalenko is not uh, being careful, he might actually end up losing this game. I mean, we are playing for three results at the moment. Three results, all three results possible in this game. We might, I mean, we're still alive. What is the score in the match is five to seven. We have four games going on. We have Johann Sebastian down to 12 seconds on the clock. Johann Sebastian needs to make a draw in order to keep the gnomes alive. And it's not going to happen, is it? The white king is all the way up to f6. That is a stunning effort by the white king. And now just play d6 d6 and the queen will join the attack and there's no way to stop queen g8 checkmate uh, so d6 is a killer right here and that means that fres needs to win his game fres needs to win his game but at the moment that is a actually a possibility this game is not decided at all Winning this game is not out of the realm of possibility. Um, well, probably it is. It should be. It, but he's fighting. Like, King C6 now would be a big blunder. And Kovalenko is checking with his teammates. I don't know if this is allowed, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyhow. No, I'm not going to do it. Because Kovalenko is, is not repeating moves. Kovalenko is not repeating moves, so I'm not going to tell Fres that we need a win. Because, frankly, he cannot win. I mean, there's, there's no chance. The best White can do is uh, a draw by repetition. Because if he goes out of the repetition, then um, then he's getting checkmated, essentially. This king is not going to survive. But what's going to happen is that Kovalenko doesn't know that a draw is enough. So Kovalenko is playing for the win. Kovalenko is playing for the win. And as such, there is some chances he will make a mistake and give Fres uh, a chance to win the game. Let's go to Hansen against Katane. Um, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Probably White is better in this position. No, uh, but Torbjorn should keep his rook. 
Torbjorn should keep his rook. Uh, outside past pawn, dangerous, asked Fraggy. Yes, but at the same time, Kovalenko can just take it if he wants to. He can just take the pawn and then go for a draw, uh, re removing the last white pawn. So I if he wants a draw, he can just take on g5. And he does. He does. Because uh, Johann Sebastian has lost his game. Johann Sebastian has lost his game. How did that finish? d6 was a pretty easy win, I think. But instead, he went rook g8. That feels very unnecessary. But maybe there was a forced checkmate? Uh, probably. Um, but let's watch uh, Kovalenko. Uh, the last chance now is that Kovalenko manages to get himself mated against a lone knight. So Johann Sebastian has lost his game. It's currently 5-8. to eight. And Torbjorn has won his game. So it's 6-8. Uh, to eight. And Johan is still better uh, in his game. But unfortunately, just going to Queen here is going to bring Kovalenko the match win. He's not going to Queen, but it doesn't really matter because you have nothing better than going back and forth. And Johan, Johan has lost his game. Johan has lost his game. So the Gnomes have lost this match against the Riga Magicians. Johan has lost his game. He had a promising position, but uh, he ended up blundering a bishop. If queen takes, then knight e3 is a doubled attack and also opens the attack for the black queen. Yes. So it was a heroic effort in the fourth, in the third games, sweeping uh, four to nil. But in the end, the Riga magicians were just too strong. Fresine makes a draw and it's uh, six and a half against nine and a half. That's very funny. Guitar Spider says, close but no pizza. Close but no pizza. Yes, that is true. Yeah, not a big day for the Norwegians. Uh, Torbjörn Hansen makes two points on the fourth board for my fantasy team. That's probably pretty good. But as far as I understand, Anand has already wrecked my chances of winning the big fantasy chess prize. Yeah, I, I barely have any voice left. Uh, this has been actually a really exciting uh, match, uh, if somewhat uneven at times. Uh, we started out losing the first four games 4-0, then we lost 3-1. We were down 7-1 and we managed to win four straight games, making it 7-5. Uh, so every, every matchup was pretty lopsided uh, and um, in the end, the magicians managed to hold on to their 7-1 um, win. HT92 is suggesting I buy a pizza and eat it in front of them without sharing. Yeah, I don't know. And whenever I eat pizzas, people have a tendency of laughing at me because I don't eat cheese. So I order my pizzas without cheese and somehow people start laughing. What's the winning strategy, coach? Um, yeah, it seems like the wing strategy is having Magnus on the team. <laughs> uh, both times we've been without Magnus, 
we have had good teams with good chances to make something happen and yet we have lost we have lost to the mumbai movers and we have lost to the riga magicians pizza with no cheese the chat is not uh being appreciative of that kind of pizza i just want to tell you all that uh, i got a lot of heartache for my cheeseless pizzas over the years uh but uh, actually i was um informed by mr carlson uh, that uh, pizzas without cheese are actually very popular during the new york fashion week so during the fashion week uh the cheeseless pizza is very popular who knows why who knows why i mean it could be any reason why cheeseless pizzas are popular among the fashion week attendees but i have i have an idea what the reason might be um i'm gonna find the um I'm going to find the standings. Probably the standings have been updated. Ah, uh, the standings are not updated because the standings are being updated when all the games are finished and we were the first match to start. So, so there's still a lot of chess going on being played. Uh, for the background, we should probably just get Anand. Anand in the background makes for decent entertainment, right? Where is Anand? I cannot find him. Let's check out Petrosian with the black pieces. Petrosian is my pick for the fantasy team. No, actually, I decided against Petrosian. My fantasy pick is Abdusatarov. Uh, I, I hope he's been doing well. And I hope he can manage to win this game with white. Although with moves like Bishop F1, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think you're going to win chess games exchanging the bishops like that. Oh, well. Chess Bay has a link to fantasy results for the round. Hawkon is reminding us that Fresine is too weak, too slow. My guy Nudir Beck, the youngest grandmaster in the world, is at one and a half out of three. And that is not a very good score. I am disappointed in my guy for not scoring any more points on the third board. And I have a fellow cheeseless pizza lover in the chat shout out to laya who um well has better reasons being allergic to milk proteins um but um but yeah cheeseless pizza with carrots of course very good stuff um yeah i'm gonna call it a day i i can feel my voice uh being tired with the match the riga magicians have beaten the norway gnomes nine and a half to six and a half uh, we will be back stronger than ever there's a new match this time against the armenian leaders of our division uh, the norway gnomes against the armenian eagles uh, will be played next week at the same time 5 p.m 5 p.m oslo time next wednesday we will be playing the top match against armenia uh do watch out for my next stream i will be playing in the arena kings tournament 
tomorrow at um, 8 p.m. My stream will probably start at 7.30. So, or is it 9 p.m.? Uh, I don't remember. But my next stream is the Arena Kings tournament. I think it starts, it starts either 8 or 9. 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, Eastern, says Chess Bay. That means it's 9 p.m. Uh, I'm going to be starting the stream at 8.30. So 8.30 tomorrow, uh, Oslo time, is my next stream. I hope the Gnomes will do better against the Armenian Eagles. That's going to be a very important matchup for whether or not we make it uh, to the knockout stage. There's a real danger of not qualifying to the knockout stage, but it's such uh, an evenly matched division everybody is beating everybody so it's going to be so so close as uh, the excitement approaches um 8 30 um uh, also low time central european time tomorrow um until then thank you everybody and goodbye enjoy the pro chess league there's going to be a lot of more pro chess league action throughout the um, the night and i will also be hosting the official uh, chess.com channel